Today, we continue the story of Canada's failing battle against inflation. While Justin Trudeau and Christian Freeland have been celebrating early victories through premature back padding, the painful reality for average Canadians is that the government's so-called plan to lower costs has achieved no such victory. In fact, inflation has jumped sharply once more, exposing Freeland's claims of success in July as completely unfounded, with prices of essentials like food and housing skyrocketing far beyond targets, hurting families' budgets, it's clear Trudeau is focused on short-term gains rather than long-term solutions and has left our country ill-equipped to weather economic storms. In this video, we will take a closer look at why the latest inflation data proves that Trudeau and the Liberal government's efforts have fallen flat. We will also explore why opposition critics argue years of deficit spending and misplaced priorities are largely to blame and are the real reason for Canadians continuing to face financial hardship. Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. In July, Freeland prematurely declared the mission accomplished when inflation dipped slightly. But the drop was minor and largely due to falling gas prices, a factor outside our leader's control. Now in August, the rate has jumped back over 4%, showing her claims of success were completely unfounded. It's becoming increasingly clear that Finance Minister Christia Freeland is in way over her head when it comes to tackling inflation. While she loves to preen for cameras and spin a happy narrative when numbers slightly dip, she offers no leadership or substantive plans to curb rising costs. When inflation dipped slightly in July, Christia Freeland couldn't contain her glee. Canada's plan to bring down inflation is working, she boasted on Twitter. At an event in Washington, D.C., Freeland exclaimed, Inflation, we had our inflation number on Tuesday. 2.8%. Isn't that great? Yeah, it is. Her theatrical quotes peddling happy talk illustrates someone more focused on spin than substance. When questioned on inflation causes, Freeland ridiculously claimed it was a global phenomenon, not a made-in-Canada problem. This is a global phenomenon. It is not a made-in-Canada phenomenon. This ignores years of deficit spending fueling domestic pressures. As prices rise further, Freeland has disappeared from public view, unwilling to take responsibility. But Canadians don't need another part-time finance minister who refuses to acknowledge policy failures. We need leadership committed to enacting difficult reforms, not political theater declaring victory at the first minor sign of hope. Freeland insists we are doing everything we can to help Canadians through this difficult time. Yet her only concrete proposal was asking grocery giants to stabilize prices. This flimsy plan shows she lacks understanding of the dynamics driving costs. It's clear Freeland is in over her head. With each new inflation data point undermining her misguided optimism, she further erodes confidence in her leadership. Canadians are suffering as costs for basics like food and housing skyrocket well beyond the Bank of Canada's target. Yet rather than taking responsibility, Freeland disappears when numbers rise, only appearing to celebrate declines that offer fleeting relief at best. On the same note, Trudeau stood idly by as three premiers rightly pressured the Bank of Canada to halt damaging hikes. Freeland offered no leadership or policy solutions. BC, Ontario, and Newfoundland leaders grasped the cost of living emergency better than Ottawa. In letters to Macklem, they highlighted rate rises worsening an already immense hardship. Yet when asked about appropriate political influence, Freeland reiterated her hands-off stance. The Bank of Canada's decision to maintain its overnight interest rate is welcome relief for Canadians. As finance minister, I fully respect the independence of the Bank of Canada. Inflation peaked months ago due to global factors beyond domestic control. Now domestic mismanagement prolongs suffering, with $60 billion in new deficit spending directly fueling higher costs. Now opposition parties are rightfully criticizing the failure of liberal leadership. Freeland's offhand stance was heavily criticized in a classic Jagmeet move. Jagmeet Singh took that opportunity to deliver another undermining jab to Trudeau saying, during a caucus retreat held in Ottawa. And it's time for Justin Trudeau, whose government sets the mandate for the Bank of Canada to clearly give the message that policies that hurt workers and hurt families are wrong. When he was asked to elaborate, Singh cited a quote from former Bank of Canada Governor David Dodge, who said, Christian Freeland should ask Tiff Macklem directly not to raise interest rates. What do you make of all of this political pressure? Is this appropriate? Uh, well, we've been through this once before with Jimmy Coyne many years ago. <laughs> And the issue is that uh, the government can always, can always instruct the bank, and if the bank doesn't want to do it, the governor will resign. Singh's doubled on the fact that the Liberals can use those discussions to request a freeze on rate increases. Jagmeet Singh also ridiculed Trudeau's plans to ask big grocery chains to simply stabilize prices, not reduce them. First of all, we shouldn't be stabilizing, we should be lowering prices. 
to just allow market forces to do it, what, what was the point of the meeting then? What, what was the outcome of the meeting if he doesn't have a plan, that the government's not going to force them, that they're going to do it on their own? Sounds like a lot of nothing to me. And at a time when Canadians have been faced with high grocery prices for almost two years, that is a, that is a complete failure of leadership. What we need to do is bring in stronger laws now. Conservative leader Pierre Polyev cuts through spin to pin blame on Trudeau's mismanagement. Today's accelerating inflation rate proves that after eight years, this prime minister is just not worth yeah. the cost. Okay. After he and his ministers pumped their fists in the air and declared victory over inflation, it has now gone up 43 percent in two months through all categories. It's higher than here in Canada than it is in the United States and Japan. And worse, it may force the Bank of Canada to raise interest rates again, causing Canadian households who are the most indebted in the G7 to go bankrupt. Will he balance the budget to bring down inflation and rates before that nightmare unfolds? Pulling the debt on Canadians is not fiscal responsibility, and forcing Canadians to live in tents is not compassion, Mr. Speaker. Justin Trudeau's actions are hurting Canadians with even higher inflation. Pierre said two months after Freeland touted victory, rates have jumped over 4.3% exposing the failure in her premature claims. Inflation is accelerating across all areas at a faster pace, yet Trudeau blames outside forces contrary to assessment from former finance minister John Manley that domestic overspending under this administration is largely at fault. Trudeau doubles down on disastrous decisions by tacking $60 billion more to deficits through his latest budget. This uncompromising borrowing and spending directly fuels skyrocketing living expenses. Worse still, Trudeau enables further taxation, not only implementing his own inflationary carbon tax, but working with the bloc who seek to radically increase the tax pain on consumers. The bloc backs not just the carbon tax, but Trudeau's new fuel standard tax as well. Together, these policies disproportionately impact working people struggling with survival costs. Inflation is now accelerating. He hasn't brought it down. He stacked 4% inflation on top of the previous 8% inflation, which means that Canadians can't eat, heat, or house themselves. Will he re reverse his disastrous policy so Canadians can pay their bills? Prime Minister. With each rate hike by the Bank of Canada to compensate for liberal inflation, the risks grow of a policy-induced recession. Yet still, Trudeau throws around money with no regard for the damaging consequences. Trudeau, meanwhile, offers empty platitudes while doing little to change the damaging policies exacerbating inflation. Years of deficits and wasteful spending have left us ill-prepared for economic storms. Canadians deserve so much better than false victories and weak responses. To really tackle rising costs, this government must rein in wasteful spending, cut taxes instead of raising them, and focus on the hard reforms needed rather than empty photo ops and spin. Our economy is paying the price for years of liberal misrule. If Trudeau and Freeland won't change course, it may fall to opposition parties to implement the leadership Canadians need to get finances under control and put more money back in Canadians' pockets. That's all for today. What do you think should be done to handle this crisis before it's too late? Let me know in the comments below. Also, kindly subscribe and leave a like for this video and our other videos because they go a long way in helping our latest content rank. Follow us on our new Twitter account, where we post stuff we can't post on YouTube. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and we'll see you in the next one.